48 volt, 100 amp hour. Hey guys, Mike Builds. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at and doing a little bit of testing on this DC house 48 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. We've done a bunch of 12 volt battery testing on the channel, but now I wanna start moving up into some bigger higher end batteries, I guess you could say, and the 48 volt battery is naturally a best choice for that. These can be used in golf carts and 48 volt solar power systems, pretty much anything where you need 48 volts of power. The DC house brand has been around for a long time. These are actually pretty popular and a ton of people use them and have really good luck with them. Previously, we reviewed one of the 100 amp hour 12 volt versions of the battery and it did really well. So this battery features Bluetooth. It also has low temperature protection. Protection. It has a 200 amp smart BMS. It can do 700 amps of discharge for one second. It can do 200 amps continuously. In the box with the battery, you get the user manual, the app user manual for the Bluetooth app. It came with this fiberglass, one of those fiberglass sheets. I'm not really sure what this is for. So we're gonna have to maybe check and see what that's for. Maybe it's just for shipping to protect everything, but not really sure. Also very interesting with this battery, you get this little Bluetooth capacity monitor and all you do is wire it to the 48 volt battery and this is gonna display the Bluetooth reading from the BMS. So I'm excited to try that out and see how that works. Here's a spec card that basically gives you all the specs on the battery. So we have 700 amps for one second, 250 amps for 30 seconds, and 200 amps continuous. And it says the battery weighs 82 pounds, which I believe because these 40 volt batteries are absolutely monsters, they're super heavy. Another thing this battery also comes with is a charger. So this is actually a whole kit you buy and it comes in two separate boxes. So it does include a charger for the price as well. So you get a really nice 18 amp charger. There's the specs on the charger comes with a removable pigtail. That way you can maybe mount this if you're gonna put this in your golf cart or your power station or your RV or whatever. Charger's really nice, has a big cooling fan on the top. And yeah, 18 amps, that's pretty good. Now right now on Amazon, the battery with the charger and everything you see here goes for 830 bucks. They rate this battery at 4,000 charge and discharge cycles, low temp cutoff, advanced 2C BMS. So it's designed to power a wide range of 40 volt applications, golf carts, RVs, trolling motors, marine vessels, off-grid systems. So my plan is this video, we're gonna charge this thing up, do a capacity test. We're definitely gonna put as much of a load on it as we can. We may even install it in the golf cart and just see if it'll handle the golf cart just fine. Then we're gonna take this thing apart and kind of get a really good look at the inside, the BMS, how the build quality is, and see if this thing is worth the money. And you guys at home will be able to see kind of what you're getting for your money as well. I'm really excited. I love 48 volt, big, powerful batteries. These things are awesome. Personally, I have a bunch of 48 volt batteries because I have my big 48 volt off-grid power station right here that kind of runs a lot of stuff in my house. Now, as far as dimensions, for y'all who are curious, it is 19 and a half inches long, 10 and a half inches wide, and eight and three quarter inches tall. And let's see how much it weighs. 85 pounds. Oh yeah. Man, this thing is heavy. This charger is also really nice. So almost a thousand watts of charging power. All right, we have our charger plugged in. The light right here is flashing between red and green. And we're just gonna go ahead and connect it. While we have it charging, we're gonna go ahead and connect our display up and see how this works. Very curious to see how this thing actually connects to it. Oh, there it went. Somehow it automatically connected. No, it actually connected to another battery I have somewhere, because if you look, it's reading 13.1 volts. How do I get it to connect to this battery? All right, let me figure that out real quick. All right, so this little screen's pretty awesome, but I'm having an issue. The problem is I have so many other batteries close to this thing that it's actually picking up the BMS signal from other batteries. So if you look, we're displaying 59%, it's reading 52.4 volts. But if I come to my Vader server rack battery, that's actually the BMS that it's reading. So I'm sure this works 100% just fine, but I'm gonna have to get it away from the rest of the batteries in order for it to sync up to the BMS in our DC house battery. I will say it is a nice display. It displays amps, temperature, voltage, and percentage. That's really cool. Now we're gonna open the DC house app. Off the bat, you do not have to create an account to use the app, which I love because I hate having to create accounts just to check statuses of batteries. So we're gonna add device. All right, we went ahead and added the device. So here it is. Looks really nice. This actually looks exactly like the Eco-worthy app, which is funny. It looks literally the exact same. Trying to see what else we can see on this app. So you see the voltage, the amperage going in. If you click on this data page, you can see a lot more information getting capacity and then it also tells you the voltage of each individual cell which I know some people don't like but in my opinion this is really important because it allows you to troubleshoot if you're ever having any issues with the battery you can very easily see if maybe you have a dead cell and very easily track what's going on with the battery so personally I like being able to see as much data as so the app's really nice so I'm gonna let this battery fully charge so we can start our capacity test we got the DC house 48 volt battery fully recharged I did go ahead and reset the shunt to 100% we cleared our total amp hours there so whenever the capacity is finished this will be our total right here we're at 55 volts it's hot off the charger and if we 
open the app, you can see we're at 100%. In order to capacity test the battery, we're gonna use this Sun Gold Power 48 volt 5,000 watt inverter, and we're gonna plug in a mini split AC that is installed in my garage. That's gonna put about a thousand watt load, which for this battery is 0.2C. It should run it for about five hours. Once it's completed, we're gonna be able to see what the final capacity is. And there we go. So the load test is going. We'll see what the results are. We just concluded the discharge test of this DC house battery, and we got a total of 104 amp hours. So I'm gonna get this thing fully recharged so we can do some more testing. So the final test of this battery, we're gonna go ahead and install it in the golf cart. Because it's golf cart rated, we're definitely gonna wanna test that. We have my EasyGo RXV. Currently it has lithium batteries in it, but we have four separate batteries with an equalizer. So we're gonna pull all of this out, get this thing connected and hooked up and go do some driving. Are you ready? <laughs> How are we gonna do this? Batteries installed, fits in there very nicely. Actually takes up a lot less room than four individual batteries. All right, here we go. We're gonna flat floor it to see if it holds up to the amp draw. All right, so here we are, we're doing an extreme off-road test. So we're in the middle of nowhere. In some dirt. Oh yeah. Hook climb. <laughs> Say yeet. And then while we're driving, we can open our app right here. And as you guys can see, we're at 83%. And you can see in real time, the amperage draw and everything. So you can easily keep track of your battery while you're driving around. Should we try to climb that? I feel like we should, but uh, we need to look for a more flatter section. I want to take that plant right there. I want to throw the sunflower in the back. You really want that? Yeah. I grab the sunflower. My dude got a big sunflower. That's a nice sunflower. Overall, the performance of the battery is awesome, and I have no idea how much range we would get. Guys, so far the performance of the DC house battery has been amazing and it did really well in the golf cart test. Next, we're gonna go ahead and crack this thing open. We're gonna try to take a good look at the cells and the build construction, how they build it, the BMS and all that good stuff, and just kind of judge the build quality, see if we see anything crazy. I've never actually seen inside one of this style 40 of all batteries. I've seen a bunch of server rack batteries taken apart and me have personally taken apart some server rack batteries, but not one of this style case batteries. So I'm curious to see how the layout is of everything. Okay. No, oh, it stinks. Here's a first good look at everything with the lid open. Nice big beefy BMS with nice large heat sink. It looks like from the BMS to our positive terminal, you get four eight gauge wires. They terminate here. You get a really nice solidly crimped connection with heat shrink. And then you also get some of this insulation right here. This is gonna protect that from the heat as well as any sort of abrasion. Same thing for the positive, but you only get one conductor. So it's more than likely a six gauge wire. Same thing, really nice connection there. You have the connection right here from the actual battery to the BMS. Looks like you also get four conductors on that. I really don't see any labeling on the BMS, so I can't quite identify what kind of BMS this is. You get a lot of potting compound right here in order to secure your balancing harness, your temperature sensors. So you have two temp sensors. You have one here and you have one here and they're kind of just thrown in there. You also have a high temp switch right here. You can actually see the word UART on there. So it is a smart BMS. Obviously we have the Bluetooth. That's actually what the sticker's for. That's the address for the Bluetooth for the actual BMS itself. You get some nice foam on the cover here, as well as foam here pushing down on the cells. This more than likely connects the two eight cell strings together. So you probably have eight right here, eight right here. They're joined right here to make that series connection. Then you have your main positive and your main negative on this side of the battery. I'm gonna try to see if I can't get this giant sheet off the battery because it looks like the cells and everything are tucked underneath here. Then they put this big old fiber sheet. I believe this is fiberglass. They put this huge sheet on there and then they put a lot of epoxy around the edges in order to kind of hold it down, which is a really good design. It looks like it's very sturdy. If you look right here, you actually have one, two, three, four, as well as one, two, I would assume two more on that side. And that's actually gonna be the cell holders themselves. So more than likely underneath this, you have big strips of metal going across in order to compress and hold all the cells together. I'm gonna try to see if I can't take this apart a little bit further without causing permanent damage. I went ahead and pulled all our cables off the main studs of the battery. Hopefully I can lift this up 
Here's the crossover wire I was telling you guys about. Also very nice, good quality crimp there. Nice heat shrink, everything looks really nice. Nice thick lugs and the wire feels like a, maybe a four gauge, hard to tell. So this sheet right here is probably about five millimeters thick that everything's mounted on. So here are those metal straps that I was telling you guys about before. So the entire cells are encased in a metal frame, which I really love to see. It's gonna make the battery very structurally strong. Now what you cannot see is the cell terminals are actually on this side, as well as on the, on the back side. So each cell is laying basically with the bottoms of the cells facing each other. And then all your wiring and balance harness and bus bars are gonna be along this face of the battery here, as well as on that face there. It's really hard to see in there, but you can kind of sort of see the bus bars. I'm gonna assume they're all laser welded. And you're gonna have eight cells going this way. You're gonna have another eight on that side to give you your 16S for your 48 volt. Unfortunately, I can't go much further than this without undoing a bunch of stuff, possibly destroying the battery. I really don't wanna mess this thing up just cause how expensive this battery is. So hopefully you guys got kind of a good idea of the build quality just by kind of looking at this. I guess worst case scenario in the future, if we really do get a lot more curious, we can just cut the whole box off this. But I really wanna use this as designed and intended. That's probably really the only negative I can think of as far as this design goes versus a normal server rack battery is there's nothing really you can service in this battery. If you really wanted to, obviously anything is very much possible, especially if the tools and equipment and the time, but everything is a little bit more compact in this battery design. So do keep that in mind, but we're gonna go ahead and get all this put back together. You could very easily service the BMS. I don't think that would be an issue. And if you really wanted to change the cells out, you could at least harvest some parts off this battery, you know, thinking way in the future, but you should be able to get at least 10 years of life out of this battery if you care for it. Guys, that's gonna do it for us testing and reviewing this DC house, 48 volt, 100 amp hour battery. This thing did phenomenal, passed all the testing we did at it and did really well on our golf cart power test. Just like they advertise, it works really good for that. It fits nice and compact in a golf cart as well. I was very surprised about that. Build quality looked pretty good. What do you guys think about that? As always, leave your thoughts and comments in the comments. Thank y'all so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think about this and I'll see y'all in the next video.